if i if i if i ask to all of you what type of manual handling activities are there can we prepare a list of manual handling activities uh being performed within sadara or anywhere at your project site even because that is our uh, most important topic the 6.2 you know and absenteeism going up because manual handling activities are not being managed safely that area is uh, some kind of neglected area even though the companies are uh, uh, getting mechanical solutions or automation is going on but not everywhere because we believe that those solutions are expensive solutions but on the other side our employees uh, definitely they are in trouble like i gave you an example like 30 kg box they are lifting and it's a continuous work for several hours you know like for one shift so what type of manual handling activities uh, uh, you have assessed or completed your risk assessment within your company any idea to anyone over to you please examples of manual handling activities uh, assalamu alaikum good morning نعم يا سفاس حياك الله regarding many one manual handling you know the always uh, activity will be used is the scaffolding you know for scaffolding team they have always uh, uh, manual handling their scaffold material even some yeah. box with for with the clamps of yeah, the scaffold they uh, they take it for the first third four, eight floors So, yeah, uh, this is sometimes they take it by manual, okay, the pipe, okay, and uh, sometimes they use a rolly, okay, rolly for this, for, for lifting this one, okay. So this is a, yeah, a good practice. Yeah, we call it gin wheel also. Yeah. Yes. So this, uh, yeah, this is the always uh, uh, continue li- li- uh, manual lifting. Also, the the worker there. You know they will not be rest for uh, for from this activity. So, yani, uh, this is one example of the manual handling. Excellent. So, okay. as yeah, even for yeah. uh, also for uh, the you know shutdown activity for the maintenance team when they Absolute. want to lift that the, the small BSB or uh, pump or or valves, you know. Sometimes they are, yani, they lift it by hand or something. So this is also one example of manual handling. So, yani, alhamdulillah, here in Sadara, we have a very good system for uh, ergonomic system Excellent. and uh, and uh, manual handling uh, system. Brilliant. So uh, even for a browser procedure, you know, we have a procedure for manual handling Excellent. and uh, ergonomic. So they are always, you know, follow this. That's Excellent. it for my side. excellent mashalla so you you mostly like uh, diminishing and minimizing your manual handling activities by optimizing your processes like bringing technology inside you know but wherever it's not possible or the manual handling is unavoidable of course you know you must have some kind of uh, uh, step by step guidance to them and uh, uh, i would say some safe uh, work instructions surely you're going to provide it because as a role model i was expecting you guys have a great system ashaba now but still uh, we can look into our first day database you know uh, maybe for last one year and we can see how many uh, uh, you know our employees have reported the kind of uh, muscle pull or back pain or muscle cramp issues just because of uh, uh in their processes might be manual handling is involved so through that data including our office staff you know if they are also reporting back pain so at least we can through that data surely we will find the the focused area actually and then we start uh, realizing what are the best solutions or how we can teach our employees to make sure they are ensuring their safety you know because since that manual handling activities are unavoidable like you gave an example of uh, scaffolding now the problem with the scaffolding material is the weight is not similar for all the parts you know 
like if you start from sail board or sole board the weight is different you know okay if it is base plate the weight is different if you talk about standard or post again weight is different if you talk about planks you know sail board sole board and planks might be going to be similar weight but uh, on the planks we need more stronger material even comparing to uh, sail board or sole board because the people are going to stand there and that is kind of a work station on the other side we have plenty of uh, you know things to be taken upside and if uh, that activity is also being done manually like taking their uh, tools and equipment while performing a process upside again you know so each stage we have to truly realize and then see is there any possibility to teach them and give them a better system or we are quite okay with the existing controls what i mean is separate risk assessment we can do only for manual handling activities or processes now the manual handling is kind of a lifting carrying pushing and pulling of a load by bodily force it's entirely uh, we are going to use our force the bodily force so common types of uh, manual handling injuries uh, back injury that's why i mentioned you can review your uh, first aid record and see how many back pain or injuries are reported from your employees for the last one year and also prolapse this you know tendon and ligament injuries and muscle injuries hernies or even you know this ruled and cuts burns and dislocation and broken bones just because of manual handling activities now what is the uh, best technique as per nibosh theories same way before lifting and during the lift and sitting down so three steps before lifting the lift and sitting down so before lifting make sure you have kind of a common sense and if because sometimes it's not written you know what is the weight of that uh, particular box or the equipment you are lifting might be you don't have idea for the load but still it's much better to check the load and uh, plan the route of the carry uh, how many stuff you need to walk and where from where you are going to pick up and uh, where is the landing area actually and what is that route uh, either it is okay for you to i mean safe enough all the way and establish a firm grip and make sure during the lift the bend the knees and use the leg the way you are going to lift now keep the back upright back upright and keep the load close to the body the more the load uh, away from the body the more uh, chances of uh, you know injuries actually so avoid twisting over reaching or jerking jerking even once you are going to setting down as per nibosh theory is what they are guiding use the same principle as lifting maintain good balance and also set the load down and then adjust its position using body weight but still the most important thing is the load itself because uh, for male it shouldn't be more than 25 kg and for female it shouldn't be more than 16 kg so the standards are very straightforward you know now assessing manual handling risk uh, as we discussed earlier four main factors are there the task individual load and environment assessing manual handling risk bear in mind the word tile t i l e tile that means the task individual load and environment so let's discuss one by one the task mean the height of the load the repetition of task and also carry distance stooping twisting rest breaks vertical distance above shoulder height and over reaching this is just an example look at the picture here now uh, the next is the individual uh, who is going to lift after task like individual capabilities you unusual Uh, ability required and significant risk to vulnerable people, pregnant workers and workers with pre-existing back injuries. So we truly have to assess what kind of individual is going to lift or performing that manual handling activity. 
No, the load, we surely have to be familiar what is the weight we are going to lay. And we should encourage our employees, don't try to, to be the hero actually. Because sometimes people uh, just want to show off and, uh, you know, trying to keep their boss happy. They, they, they can do different things, you know, just to impress him, like instead of one box, they can try lifting four boxes, but we truly need to encourage them and discourage them actually for that uh, particular kind of uh, heroism, not to show actually, because that's a killing point. So size and bulk, stability and center of gravity is critically important. Grip, is it hot, sharp, et cetera? So the load also need to be verified, either it's uh, having any sharp edges or hot enough. Now, what about the environment? I mean, the environment, imagine if a space restrictions are there, even that small manual handling activity could be difficult. Same way the floor, floor shouldn't be slippery and uneven floors need to be avoided. Changes in floor levels and the light levels, temperature and humidity. And for the environment, again, Sadara is the best example, mashallah, an excellent example in the market as a role model. I'm sure you might have humidity meters, you are measuring your temperatures, you are having a deep uh, safety inspection on day-to-day -day basis. Any damage on the floor, you will be definitely performing maintenance. That means zero tolerance requirement with uh, environmental kind of standards, you know. Now, avoiding or minimizing the manual handling risk. Again, the hierarchy of control coming with the elimination. Make sure if it is avoidable. If it is not avoidable, then surely you have to assess. And use handling aids, modify the task. Either you modify the task or load or environment. Match individual capabilities to the activity. Now, like in the scaffolding process, uh, like Mr. Fawaz gave an example, you know, the scaffolding process, the people who are physically fit, for them lifting few pipes, uh, you know, in a random time, not frequently, uh, random as for the need uh, during uh, erection of the scaffolding or dismantling of the scaffolding or even transporting some materials. If they're physically fit, for those employees, things couldn't be so much critical, but the persons who never went for exercise or, you know, having only always the same activity, the scaffolding, but no other physical activity and the diet plan is not good enough, those gentlemen would be surely in trouble, you know. So in that, in that context, he's talking about match individual capabilities to the activity, that he's perfectly right person for the right job. Now, how are we going to avoid and minimizing the manual handling risk? It's a game of automation. It's not like uh, always we will get solution from the market. Sometimes we need to call our mechanical engineers and we're going to tell them, can you, can you bring some automation ideas so we can avoid manual handling activities, we can reduce them. Might be they can give you a better design and through fabrication firms, you know, or companies, what you are doing, you are designing your own equipment. If it is not available in the market, like in one of my projects in Jeddah, you know, uh, we faced the same issue and no doubt we tried different things. And ultimately the last thing which was successful was our, our own invention actually. Uh, previously, we were relying on the market invention that the market have some solutions. So let's uh, aim build and make sure, you know, we have a good uh, transportation of material and all that. But every time the market solution was being failed because it was bringing some other hazard inside, then we realized we need to, we need to sit together and redesign the process and through the fabricated firms, you know, we're going to call them and uh, redesign our uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, conveyor or the way we are going to uh, transport the material from one point to another actually, instead of relying on the market solutions. And it was quite successful. And until today, no issue. Only thing is 
the moment you are going for your self fabrication kind of uh, uh, designing then make sure you know that fabrication is not creating more hazards like no sharp edges the design is perfectly you know in line with your expectations rather than or it shouldn't be changed by the fabricator at all make sure you benchmark everything and uh, the way it should be assembled with the machinery because you are putting interconnected uh, you know from one machine to another you are interconnecting them for shifting some materials then make sure you know the the way the the way you uh, select the material it should be uh, as per the required capacity like how much material so it it's all all factors you need to evaluate then you decide to go for fabrication and even you don't give bulk orders you just try one item and if it is good enough you evaluate reassess and make sure you know everything will go fine so then you benchmark and uh, give order to the fabricator for the rest of the uh, same kind of items you know so what i mean is self uh, that is my belief also that self done is well done self done is well done the things which we can invent or can create sometime would be much much better than even comparing to the market solutions you know. so no harm to to be creative actually to redesigning our processes or have some kind of uh, uh, solutions you know self made solutions for reducing or avoiding manual handling activities or reducing the risk of manual handling no harm to do it but again it required time it required some budget and the market and sometimes it's very much beneficial also like market solution is maybe 10000 real just an example but your self created formula through the fabricator is just 3000 real so 7000 real you are saving only thing is you created your design by yourself and you you know how to get performance from the fabricator actually but make sure the selection of the fabricator that's also uh, he has to be competent actually so uh, same way like automation is the is the best kind of uh, thing we can reduce or minimize the risk of manual and, and activities or mechanization or conveyor system forklift trucks pallet trucks crane and hoist now avoiding or minimizing manual handling risk uh, look at one example like trolleys barrel lifts gin wheels trucks and hoist and lift but bear in mind they are also bringing some hazards and risk inside like few people are using hand trolleys other one is using the forklift and uh, all are working in a warehouse then surely you need to provide a kind of a system where they are not going to hit to each other and not going to create any sort of accident now avoiding or minimizing the manual handling risk uh, again all four like uh, factors task load environment and individual task individual load or environment in any way just make sure these four factors are considered importantly now the task required rest breaks or job rotation eliminate stooping or twisting table lift that is all relevant to the task the load smaller the loads stabilized loads and uh, mark center of gravity attach handle several workers you can apply rather than because one one is equal to 11 so instead of uh, lifting individually if you believe the weight is uh, above 25 kg so have someone else also with you the environment like rearrange work space level uneven floor and also additional lighting individual make sure you match individual capabilities to the activity so same thing which we already discussed so i'm sure this manual handling some of the techniques will be helpful and the way sadara as an example you are leading the market mashallah 
surely still you can find further opportunity for improvements like still maybe uh, several points if you if you go a little bit more deeper plenty of uh, solutions to reduce your manual handling activities still can be found and you can go for further improvement in charge